Hi, in this video I'm gonna be showing you how I converted models of sneakers from an OBJ file to be assets of conforming clothes for DAS Studio. This is only about shoes. While the process for other clothes appear to be very similar, there might be different hurdles and caveats to watch out. So for this, you may want to endeavor a search in the net. You'll find some information on that as well. Looking up sneakers on 3D model resources like ZG Trader or Sketchfab and others, I find a plentitude of models. But practically none of those are in DAS DUF format or even prepared for the use in DAS Studio. So in order to overcome the limited supply in DAS own shop, I have to convert third-party models to be DAS compatible. After downloading and unpacking one of those models to my RAW files folder, I found only two files for further processing. One is the mapped texture image, which I later can simply apply to the mesh because it complies with the UV mapping. The other one is the OBJ file containing all the geometry for the model. I can open it up in Windows built-in 3D viewer. Importing an OBJ file in DAS Studio is very simple, so I'm tempted to import the model right away. I just drag it from the File Explorer to the Viewport and DAS Studio opens the Import dialog. There I leave everything default and wait what happens if I click Accept. The model got imported, but it's fairly small and completely off orientation. Now, we must consider that for the conversion to conformal clothing, DAS Studio needs the model in the exact position as if the figure would be already wearing it. Also, it needs both shoes, since it can't mirror the existing geometry. So, all my attempts to get it right in DAS Studio alone are doomed to failure. I need a proper mesh editor and for this I'm gonna be using Blender. But before I go there, I have to export my Genesis 8 avatar figure because I need something for orientation in the elsewise empty workspace. I click on File, Export, choose an easy to remember name for it and then I have to deal with the Export dialog which happens to provide a target template for Blender. With that selected, Studio sets the scale percentage to 2%. Full of confidence, I hit accept and head over to Blender. Don't mind the rod, it's only there for demonstration purposes. Its length is 180 centimeters, the height of the Genesis 8 male figure. Under File, Import, I choose Wavefront OBJ. In the following dialog, I select the previously exported OBJ file and confirm by clicking Import OBJ. The result is not exactly what I expected. The figure is oriented along the wrong axis and it's twice as big as it should be. So the standard settings for DAS to Blender export are wrong. In DAS Studio, I re-export and confirm overwriting the old OBJ file. The template got me 2% scale and it needs to be half, so I set 1%. The figure was lying along Blender's Y axis, while it should have been Z, so I flip Z and Y in the export dialog. And that did the trick. Just for fun and confirmation that interchanging geometry between Blender and DAS Studio properly works, I export the figure back to Studio. Because I had to export the figure from DAS Studio scaled to 1%, I now must scale Blender's export 100 times in order to get DAS Studio to import it correctly. But there I get this weirdly marbled looking figure. But that's okay. DAS Studio by default places the imported figure at the world origin, so the two shapes are now exactly congruent. Well, not so much exactly, the specs you see are the differences. My guess, it's because of small floating point errors. I can prove that's two figures by moving the original out of the way. Back in Blender, I get rid of the pole and save the project file for future use. Here in the video I call the figure for getting the props alignment right, Avatar, because, well, it sounds cool. Now it's time to import the model of the sneakers. I'm just leaving everything default and hit Import OBJ. Seemingly nothing happens, but looking closer I've got a new object in the scene and at least I can see its center point at the world origin. So, something's loaded and it might be either very small or outside my field of view. 
Here it is, and it's of a humongous size and totally wrong orientation. Now, my task is to bring it back to a position and size that fits the avatar's foot. I want to rotate it properly around its own axis, so I move its origin to its center of geometry. Then I move it roughly over my figure. Rotate it, so that it's not upside down anymore, and scale it by using the S keyboard shortcut, until it has a reasonable size for zooming in. And then again scaling, moving, rotating, until the shoe fits perfectly. To see what's going on inside the shoe, I switch on the X-ray view. I notice that the small toe is poking through the sneaker's mesh. So again, some rotating, moving and scaling. After I took my time to get the perfect fit for the right shoe, I get Blender to create the left one. The easiest way to do this is using a modifier. The mirror modifier duplicates and mirrors the object along the selected axis. I select the x-axis and expect the sneaker's duplicate to sit at the avatar's right foot, but that doesn't happen. This is because the avatar figure is aligned to the world's x-axis and having its origin at the world's origin. Whereas the sneaker got its own local coordinate system, which I centered to the sneaker's geometry in one of the previous steps. Hence, I got a different pivot point for the mirror modifier. But no worries, modifiers in Blender are non-destructive, so I can still change everything. With the sneaker selected, I bring up the origin menu and select origin to cursor, since the 3D cursor, that little life belt like ring, is also still located there. Again, no success, because origin to cursor only sets the location, not the orientation. By pressing Ctrl plus period, I can edit the origin point of an object without affecting the object itself. Blender makes it clear for me that the context has changed by drawing a different gizmo for the origin point. With Ctrl plus A, I bring up the Align tools and select Rotation. Et voila! The duplicate just snapped into position. Looking good, isn't it? And now I'm ready for the export to DAS Studio. I make sure the export option Apply Modifiers is selected. My mirror modifier, non-destructive so far, will now get baked in. Also note that the scale for the export is still set to 100 times. In DAS Studio, I import the sneakers I previously aligned in Blender. Since I exported the model 100 times scaled, I can import it with default settings. Bear in mind the sneakers get loaded as prop, they are not a clothing asset yet. But I can see, also in Dust Studio, they fit perfectly. This is no surprise, I've done my homework with my avatar figure already. Ok, the model is imported, let's apply the texture, shall we? I make sure my prop is selected, I am in the Surfaces pane, and the surface of the prop, there is only one, is selected as well. The Surfaces pane now shows the properties of the shader. These properties offer a setting for the base color. This is where I can set the image map for my sneakers. If I click the little arrow button, a file selector opens and I choose the texture image that came with the model. There is also a specularity map, which I ignore. The base color map I can adore also in the OpenGL preview, so I go for this one. And I'm not concerned about the convoluted looks of the image, because there is a UV mapping telling the shader where each pixel of the image goes on the mesh. And after applying the image, everything looks ok. But this is only at first glance. Closer inspection reveals the texture on the left shoe to be mirrored. Actually, it's the mesh that's mirrored and the image sticks to it. So, if it's mirrored is easy to fix, isn't it? <laughs> I just have to mirror the image map. I open the image map in an editor, flip it horizontally and save it out under a different name. 
I apply the new image map to the shader. And then that happens. If I think about it, that is only the logical consequence of applying this image using this UV map. I don't want to go that stylish, so I need a different way to fix this issue. If you look at the texture, you notice that everything is ok, only the label is not. The N of Nike must be lateral and the E medial if you apply it onto the right shoe. If you inspect the left shoe, where it is correct, the N is medial and the E lateral. So my next plan is to flip just the logo. If I do so, I'll end up with two different texture files, because the one I have now gets applied in both meshes. Since my model has only one material, I have to create a separate material for the right side to be able to load a different image. I can do this either in Das Studio or in Blender, because it's too easy in Das Studio I decide for Blender, eventually I want to learn something. In Blender, I select the mesh of the right sneaker by changing to the edit mode, selecting one of the right shoe's faces and then hit Ctrl plus L to select all linked faces. In the properties area, I open the material properties, then I select the only material being listed currently and in the material special menu, I say copy material. I create a new material slot by clicking the plus button, create a new material for that slot by clicking the new button and paste the previously copied material into that slot. I can now assign the material to the geometry by hitting the assign button because I previously selected everything belonging to the right sneaker. Finally, I rename the material slots to something I can identify in Das Studio. The rest is simply what I've shown already, exporting in Blender and importing in Das Studio. If I have a look into the surfaces pane with the prop selected, I now can see the two materials. Well, for the left sneaker, I have my image map already. Let's apply it. But for the right one, I need to mirror the label first. So let's hop over to the image editor. Now, for this simple task any editor will do, I use Affinity Photo, but also GIMP would be very well suited if you don't want to spend the money, or Photoshop if you want to get ripped off. As you can see, I drag the image into Affinity Photo's workspace. I'm not exactly what you call a specialist in photo editing, but I think the easiest way for this task is to create a freehand selection and copy the content into a new layer. Then I select the Move tool, mirror by dragging the right edge beyond the left one and rotate the selection. Once I feel that the angle matches, I place it over the existing layer as good as I can. After deselecting my freehand selection, I take care of the details which are not covered by the overlay. Forgive my crude and clumsy painting, but the final size of this detail in a potential render does not justify any big investment in editing time. Finally, I select the layers to be merged in the course of the exporting as PNG file and get the image exported. In Das Studio, I make sure the surface for the right sneaker is selected and import the newly created image. And that's it! I got two different maps on each shoe and both show the correct logo. So that was quite straightforward, right? But to keep it as simple, you have to be careful when selecting your model. I considered getting these nice looking ones in the first place, but they suffer from the same weakness. The textures are not mirrored. Moreover, the UV looks like this. Notice how the logo we saw at the heels is contorted and torn apart. I need a different toolset to get out of this rabbit hole, so I refrained from buying these since there is an abundance of other models. Ok, I have a nice prop asset, which suits DAS default figure, but this is not conformal clothing. Clothing for the DAS figures move along the movements of the figure, but if I move the Genesis 8 male's foot, the sneaker stays like it is. There is no movement at all. 
To make this happen, I must convert it to a clothing asset, a follower, because it follows the skeleton of the figure it is applied to. The conversion itself is not a big deal, but before I show you how it's done, I want to explain what I think then goes on with the prop. The differences between a prop and a figure lies in the rigging. A figure is rigged, a prop is not. A rigged model has a skeleton consisting of bones. Those bones I can move and a mapping determines which vertices of the mesh must be moved and how far if the bone moves. The idea of conformal clothing in DAS Studio is to also apply a skeleton and a mapping to the object. A skeleton which is derived from the figure the object has to fit. The skeleton will then be linked to the skeleton of the donor figure, so that all the transforms will be transferred to the conformal object as well. In DAS Studio, the transfer utility gets this job done. For the conversion, I first select the object I want to make conformal, then I click on the Scene Tabs menu. There, I select Assets Transfer Utility. That opens the Transfer Utility dialog. Here, I can choose a source and a target item. Now, following your instinct, you would say the source is the sneakers you apply to the target, the human body. But considering the theory behind it, source is the donor of the skeleton and target is the receiver. Therefore, I select Genesis 8 male for the source and worn Nike being the target. After that, I click accept. Now the studio is doing its thing. It will take some time and there is a progress bar somewhere on the other screen. After Studio finished, I observe that there is no prop anymore in the scene graph. Instead, I have a figure, as the little icon tells me. I still have the Joint Editor tool selected, so I can see that my sneakers now have a skeleton. And the skeleton happens to be similar to my Genesis 8 male ones. Go figure! Because those two skeletons are linked, the sneaker will move according to the transformation of the parent. I also notice some contortion in the tongue area. Rolling the foot sideways doesn't look too bad, but extreme tiptoeing reveals the map applied to the sneaker's mesh being problematic. If I switch over to the Weight Editor tool and select the left foot bone in the sneaker's tree, I will find the weight map in the tool settings pane. Now I make sure the map is selected so that I can visualize it. The mesh gets tainted in blue and red. The more reddish it is, the more influence the bone has on that particular part of the mesh. I can see that the transfer utility applied less weight to the upper part of the tongue and some more in the mid. This discrepance causes the stretching. In order to correct this, I can use the brush tool to paint the map. I can define the inner and the outer radius of my brush as well as the sensitivity, i.e. how much weight a brush stroke will add or subtract from the map. Now, painting the map is cumbersome. It's hard to find the right sensitivity. Here I picked way too much color. As usual, Studio reacts slow and sluggish and does not support me with clever tools. I always have to change tools to test the map and therefore lose the focus. There is no simple way to rotate the view around the area I'm working on and mirroring my drawing to the other shoe is next to impossible since there is no tolerance built in. The documentation is still lousy after so many years that Studio is around, so I don't know if there is a way to do the map painting in a reasonable tool and import it then, like you can do it with the shaders maps. Well, sorry for that little rant. In fact, despite of all the shortcomings, that Studio is still a very cool tool and rather simple to use when it comes to quickly get human bodies clothed and posed. So, without putting crazy amounts of work into it, I end up with a reasonable good rigging for my sneakers. Tilt inside transformations work sufficiently well and tiptoeing does not stretch the tongue so ugly anymore. However, bending the foot upwards kind of blows up the tongue if watched from this perspective. Also, increasing the influence on the edge of the tongue will cause it to intersect with the shin. Nevertheless, I have to consider that these are extreme and rare poses anyways and I always can do corrections with mesh grabber or the likes. But hey, it's good enough for me, I'm happy with it and save it as a support asset. And that's it, let's continue with the next one.
After some housekeeping in my folders, I fire up Blender again and repeat the scaling and positioning of the model. Let's quickly fly over it. In some cases though, you can't get it right by just positioning the whole mesh. You have to modify the mesh by moving faces, that is, vertices. Then the proportional edit mode is your friend. This will add a sphere of influence having the center point at the selected vertices. The further away vertices are, the less they get influenced, in this case rotated. But as you can see here, obviously the whole mesh gets influenced while I only want to hide the toes. But I can expand and shrink the sphere by rotating the mouse wheel while keeping the left mouse button pressed. While doing so, Blender will indicate this sphere by showing a circle. And using these simple operations, I try to cover the whole foot without distorting the model too much. The fact that most reasonably priced sneaker models consist only of one single mesh with no separately selectable parts can be a bit annoying, because either you move parts you don't want to, or you have to laboriously separate the mesh first. This does not apply to all models though. Here I loaded a sneaker where the tongue and parts of the laces are separate meshes. However, this particular model has some other problems. If you look closely, you'll find the tongue buried deeply inside. If I place this one over the avatar's foot, you will see that the foot will hide the tongue and partially also the laces. But no worries, with the model organized that way, this is a comparatively easy fix. To select the separate part of the mesh, I select one of its faces first and then press Ctrl L for linked faces. With that selected, I go to Mesh, Separate, Selection to split the tongue off into its own object. Now I can see two sneaker objects in the collection. I rename the tongue object so I can find it later. Making it invisible proves that I got the right mesh and name. Now I can move it independently from the rest of the model. Because the tongue fits already at its root, I want to move the tip only. I reduce the sphere of influence and make the tongue sticking out at the top of the sneaker. Albeit this makes it covering knot and laces. Checking with my avatar figure, I realize that I have to go even more extreme. This leads to a whole series of corrections I have to apply to make this a good fit for the Genesis 8 male figure by splitting off more objects and moving them until I get a nice looking fit. There are still more problems to come. Just look at the laces. The laces would never look like this, as if they were stiffened with starch. But instead of going back to Blender and drape them painfully, which would result in one frozen shape anyways, I choose to get it done automatically in Das Studio by using Deforce. With Deforce you can simulate the physics of cloth or any soft surface under the influence of gravity and air. You can make cloth fall in gravity and wrinkle as it drapes around an object. You can make a flag or even hair blowing in the wind if you set up a source of airflow. Preparing a surface for Deforce simulation in Das Studio is very simple. With the object to Deforce selected, I open the Scene Graphs context menu and choose Edit Geometry, add Deforce Modifier Dynamic Surface. And that's all for the first. In the Parameters pane, I observe that now there are settings for simulation. By default, the Studio applies the same Deforce properties across the whole mesh, but I want only the laces to be affected. So I go to Create, New Deforce Modifier Weight Node. This will show a properties dialog which I leave at default and will then insert a weight node into my skin graph. With that selected, I activate the weight editor tool and add a map like I did before when I repaired the map of the bones influence. Whenever Studio creates a new map, it is evenly filled to 100% which results in a red color overlay. To change this, I have to select the whole mesh first by right-clicking the viewport and selecting Geometry Selection – Select All in the context menu. Now my overlay becomes orange. Again in the context menu, I can clear the map by selecting Weight Editing – Fill Selected. In the subsequently shown dialog, I set the slider to 0% weight and hit Accept. Now that the weight is gone, I can concentrate on painting a map onto the specific regions of the sneakers. 
I switch over to the Geometry Editor tool and select two adjacent faces roughly in the middle of the lay slope. In the Viewport's context menu I go to Geometry Selection – Select Loop, so that the selection forms a closed ring around the diameter of the lace. Now I expand the selection by hitting Geometry Selection – Grow Selection repeatedly until my selection is about to hit the faces intersecting with other faces. Because Grow Selection always works in both directions simultaneously, I must rely on a good guess where the actual middle is. DeForce does not work well with intersecting geometry, so it is vital to spare the map from those spots. Once I'm happy with my selection, I change to the Weight Editing tool and fill the selected faces with 100% weight. This will tell Das Studio to only apply DeForce on that specific portion of the geometry. I'm repeating this procedure until all the moving parts of the laces are covered. Once I'm done, I open up the Simulation tab. There I select the root of the simulation tree, so that I can see all of the parameters. I make sure Start Bones from Memorized Pose is off, since this would only unnecessarily cost simulation time. The rest of the parameters I leave like they are. Now I'm ready to hit the Simulate button. With that, DeForce simulates the influence of gravity on the red portions of the mesh. But look what happened! The tip of the lace, where it appears to be wrapped in an aglet, simply flies away. The other side looks ok though. This happened because the mesh was not connected at this place. The reason why it flew away instead of just dropping is that the simulated mesh slightly repels itself to prevent to completely deflate. Here I'm fixing this in Blender by simply merging the vertices of the two separated meshes. And after that, I have to redo all the dust stuff again. Oh dear! But the result pays off. Now I can simulate that in almost all walks of life. And that's it for now. That's how I convert third-party models to DAS Studio compatible assets.